I just wanted to pop on the beginning here to let you know that all of these travel palettes are available right now in my store. The link to them will be in the very top of the description box. But with that said, I hope you enjoy the rest of the studio vlog. Hello everyone, welcome back to another studio vlog. As I'm sure I've probably already mentioned in this video as well as given the title of this video, this studio vlog is going to be focusing a lot on the process of creating some more travel palettes. And I wanted to come on here in the beginning just to sort of update you on this process given how much things are currently changing in the world and everything. And I know a few months ago probably now I did make an entire video sort of talking about how for the moment the travel palettes were sort of put on hold and obviously that has changed and I just wanted to come on here and sort of explain what is happening. It was honestly getting to the point where I kept on seeing and getting questions and comments on my YouTube and just kind of all over over the place on all of different social media platforms just asking you know what's happening with the travel palettes are you making more when are you making more are they still available and it was just getting to the point where I realized that I was almost becoming an unnecessary gatekeeper between you guys and the travel palettes and at the same time I have been running pretty low on my mystery box palettes and so I just figured while I was making more of those for restock let's just make an entire new wave of travel palettes because obviously there are a lot of you that are still interested in getting these even now. Now I did already have all of the materials ready to go for these and I have had no issues really with securing possibly any others like I obviously I'm an artist I have a good supply of paint around me and the different mediums and resins and stuff that go into these. The only thing that's going to be a bit different with these palettes that I just wanted to put out there in the video is going to be the shipping delays which are unfortunately completely out of my control but these are going to be packaged up in like a completely secure environment have not left the house in like two months <laughs> but unfortunately the shipping delays are somewhat unavoidable I have been shipping these out during the whole quarantine and social isolation process and they are taking longer but they are not getting lost so I have added a couple of new shipping options on my website for tracked shipping uh, there are some packages depending on what kind country you're from and the quantity that you buy they do get tracking already on the packages but I did put that up there as an option for anywhere else and I know it is painful for some countries I'm so sorry that I can't lower that but that is literally what it cost me to ship them out but like I mentioned I have never had a single travel palette disappear on me it's just unfortunately going to take a little bit longer to get from me to you but other than that whole long intro is out of the way let's actually get to making these travel palettes I'm basically all ready to start pour painting some palettes I have my pre-taped up lids here. I also spray painted some of them white just because I like having the two different base colors depending on what color scheme I'm going for. I've got one of my many uh, cookie trays and drying rack things. This is a new addition. This is a silicone mat because the cups that you end up putting the paint in can sometimes like drip and get paint on the bottom and stuff and it sticks like crazy to my desk as you can probably see in areas here. So I decided to buy a cheap silicone mat just so that I'm not constantly going through tin foil and stuff because even the tin foil will start ripping uh, just from sticking with the paint. So super obsessed with that and that works awesome. I have used it a little bit but can't wait to continue to use it more. Extra cups here, these ones are pre-used ones that I'm gonna recycle. Pouring medium, some Floatrol which this is new and so I might try using a bit of that in the paint, not sure yet. And then I've grabbed a few paint colors already too. I like just grabbing some ones that I want to mix up from my collection here and have some more fancy like glittery color shifting ones there. So I like pulling a few out at least to start with so I can kind of look at what color palettes I might want to use and all that kind of stuff and just you know more cups and popsicle sticks and there's some behind there and yeah so that is basically everything and so now I'm just gonna actually start painting these.
few days later now and all of the palettes have dried. I did end up doing a whole lot more than I was planning on even from the first batch which is all of these ones. I grabbed a few more that I don't believe I filmed just because I had a lot of extra paint and then I decided to of course do an entire second wave because I realized that there were a few color schemes that I forgot I wanted to really test out and even within that I grabbed even more again because I had extra paint left over. So now I have a lot of palettes to now resin which is honestly perfectly fine. It means that I have the option to hold some back if I want some extra stock to have around for a bit longer um, and just generally gives me more options. So now that these are all dry I'm now going to go ahead and actually start resining which got my setup going on over here uh, for the resin. I end up just putting some tin foil into a cookie sheet just because it's a lot easier. You really do not want the resin on the cookie sheet. It will like not come off and unlike the paint itself, which you can't really see underneath all of those palettes, but the paint will peel off, the resin won't. So I line the cookie sheets with some tin foil and then end up stacking. I end up reusing a lot of my cups this way by um, just putting the resin tin onto a cup so that the tin itself doesn't actually stick to any of the tin foil and it just the resin can drip off basically and I like using art resin so yeah gonna go ahead and actually start resining the finished palettes. I don't think this is quite the largest wave that I've ever done in one shot but it's definitely pretty close. And so now I need to figure out which ones I want as mystery box ones and which ones I want as individual. Take pictures of all the individual ones so that they have store listings on my site and I know people always ask like how do I determine what is a mystery box one or not and normally it basically comes down to things that are really similar in color. So you probably saw me in the pouring footage that I pour some of them at the same time. So for instance, this one and this one got poured at the exact same time. So they are very similar. Like they're definitely not identical by any means. It's like impossible to create identical pours for anything. But as you can see, they are very similar in color scheme. So one of them will become an individual listing and one of them will become a mystery box. And basically, like, that's just how I like to do it. And if I feel that there's maybe too many individual listings, then I will take some of those and put them as mysteries. Just so that there's, like, a variety of different color schemes for individual listings and for mystery box listings. I also, last night, got a whole lot of boxes cut. Yes, I do make custom boxes for these. That just means that they're a lot safer and it means that I get to 
save you guys on shipping cost if they are fitting the product perfectly and also a ton of palettes which this isn't exactly the amount that I need for every individual palette over there but it's pretty close and I don't always fully stock up on the palettes because obviously I can create them whatever I want because they are 3d printed I think there's 22 here right now and this is just the stack of mixing dishes. So because I do have so many, I think I might actually start just to save on storage space, might actually put these into the palettes so that they're all ready to go, especially the individual listing ones so that I know they're all ready to go, have the palettes in them and all of that. So I decided to sign a bunch more thank you cards here. There's a lot more that I have that I just have not signed because after a while I just apparently physically cannot manage to sign my name correctly. So that's going to give me a nice head start on orders that I don't have to sign extra cards for. And I also made a decent amount of extra stickers for the boxes. This is how they get sealed. But now I need to go ahead and actually individually photograph all of these palettes and then start probably editing the photos so that they are all good to go for the store listings. The other thing that I was possibly planning on doing for this video, though I don't think I'm going to because I feel like it's going to be a bit rushed and I have enough stuff to do honestly, is I ordered this clear phone case that I will pour paint and when I do it, I will make sure it is in a video so that we can sort of see the process unfold together. But honestly, I have no idea what color I want this to end up being right now. I have done obviously a lot of pour painting lately and there's just a lot of really cool color schemes that I have come up with for these palettes. And so I'm really undecided as to what I would like my phone case to be. And even if this will work in general, the buttons I might actually try and mask off just so that they actually stay uh, flexible or at least a little more flexible especially with the resin that was, is going to get put on this but I just wanted to show this in a video that at some point I'm going to test out phone case painting at least for me I'm sure like every time I do pour painting of any kind this is literally how the travel palettes became a thing people then start asking if I'm gonna make more to sell originally when I was planning on doing the newest wave of travel palettes for like March uh, I bought a bunch of pop sockets that I wanted to try out, but those are not getting painted for this time. I feel like the travel palette situation is enough of a store launch at the moment for me, enough, you know, extra for me to handle at the moment. But, you know, there's possibly a lot of different poor painting options in the future for my store. So I completely failed at filming a proper ending for this studio vlog and did not realize until I went to edit it, hence the stock picture of the new palettes and the voiceover. But I just wanted to end this vlog by saying thank you for all of your continuous support towards these palettes. It is like mind boggling to me just how much you guys seem to love these, especially given that they were somewhat of a happy accident product. I was making one for myself and there was just so much interest in the comment section of that video that I made that in that I decided to try and make some more and they have just been successful beyond anything I could have imagined. So thank you all so much. 
and because of that, they are going to be, as far as I can see, a permanent product that I will continue to make at various points throughout the year. So if right now you're not comfortable or have the means to buy one, please do not feel bad. I completely understand and do not worry. There will definitely be more of these in the future. I really love making these, so they are not going anywhere anytime soon. I hope you enjoyed seeing the creation process for this wave of travel palettes. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.